All right, guys, welcome to uh, week two of the Adaptive Nutrition Challenge. Uh, how are you guys doing? Good. Guys, schedule for the day kind of looks as follows. Uh, we're going to check in on your to-dos from last week. We kind of had a lot of uh, items that are going to set us up for success uh, going into the next five weeks. Then we're going to talk about how we did on our food items. We talked about uh, eating frequency. We talked about food quality. And then we talked about how to get some basic portion sizes there. We're going to kind of review that stuff. I'm sure you guys have questions about that, so we're going to hit those. Uh, and additionally, we're going to go through our next stage, assuming that we're getting everything about 90% so far, uh, or better. Some of you are doing better, obviously. Uh, then we're going to move on to the next step. So uh, first things first, um, did everybody get their meal plan and their body weight log? Awesome. Um, I don't see Anton here. Uh, Chris, I'm showing that you haven't opened the email. Did you get it? So you got it. Cool. Good stuff. Uh, now, assuming you guys got that body weight log, uh, Phil, Ricky, Ali, Grant, and Anton. Looks like a lot of those people aren't here. Uh, Phil, you're not logging your body weight. Why not? Yeah. It's not that automated. Hopefully, we'll get there someday. We're just kind of scans you, but we got to log the body weight. Cool. If you have questions on how to do that. Uh, reach out to me. I can help. It should be pretty straightforward. Shouldn't have a problem, but we got to start logging your body weight. Uh, that being said, I looked at the rest of y'all's charts. Uh, some good stuff in there. Uh, Zach and Lizzie. Guys already showing fantastic progress. Um, it is uh, certainly within the bounds of, of reasonability that we would show some progress already, but not necessary. So if you're kind of uh, like, well, I'm not seeing progress yet, that's okay. We're not getting to the, the whole meat of the thing quite yet. So guys, nice job. Show some awesome initial progress there. Uh, checking in on other stuff that we had to do from on that first week. Um, did everybody get in and do their body composition testing? Cool. Why not? What's that? I haven't shown up early enough to do it, like before class. So okay. Is there any chance I can do it today? Did you work out already today? No. Then you can do it today. You just have to do it at the same time consistently throughout, so about 8 p.m. at night. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. Cool. Uh, anything we can do to make it easier for you guys to, to get that done? We need that. That's going to be an important data point. We've got a bunch of data points uh, that are going to describe success for us, and many people show success in several data points. Very few people show success in all data points, so that's why we need multiple data points here. Uh, the body comp is one of them. Uh, you guys starting to use the Sleep Cycle Alarm Clock app? Fantastic. Good stuff there. Uh, the weight log we already touched on briefly. Guys, any problems with the weight log? It looks like most of you are doing really well. Waking up first thing in the morning, run to the restroom, immediately step on the scale after that. We've got a good body weight. Remember, don't worry about little fluctuations. Josh, talk to Can me. Can you put it in uh, multiple times or once you click it to submit the weight for like one day, it just stays in that? Because I, I almost, I think I like was looking at my log and then I typed in the wrong number, like on the wrong day, or at least I thought. And so when I submitted it, when I tried to resubmit a new one, it did not mean so like you can only do it. So yeah, you only get one entry per day, but you can delete it on desktop. And I think Kia's got some more detail there. Yeah, on desktop you can click on the data point and then the alert pops up like to delete it. Okay. Yeah. How often should we be doing the body composition here? Uh, you can do it up to once a week. Yeah. If you're going to do it once a week, I'm going to make you promise me that you're not going to get obsessive about it because it's going to fluctuate, just like your body weight. It's going to fluctuate, and the fluctuations are not necessarily indicative of your process. So uh, if you're like, oh, I got fatter, no, maybe not. That's maybe not what happened. But so just take it with a grain of salt. Again, all these data points make sense as a whole, but not in isolation. Um, so next up, uh, did everybody make an appointment uh, with their primary care physician for blood work? So I have a question. Yeah. So my question is, I, so I went to see my allergist, and he was like, I don't recommend doing the blood work because I don't blah, blah, blah. And so he recommended an internist versus my OBGYN. Does it, do you, I guess I'll just ask more questions about that afterwards. Like, does it, do I really need to see an internist? He might recommend it, that it would help me get better insight to the data of what I was asking versus I have to see my OBGYN anyway, so I was going to Anyway, that is everything. So uh, assuming we find something interesting, 
Yes, you're going you're gonna to need the right physician to handle that. We're not physicians. We don't pretend to be physicians. Um, but it doesn't matter who writes the script for the tests because they have no involvement in the test. It's a lab that does the tests. Their doctor doesn't do anything with the test. Yeah, they just sign a piece of paper and then you go and get your blood drawn by a lab. And so they, they don't do anything with the test. There's no, um, they interpret the piece of paper they get back, which you can also give to us to interpret. And yes, if there's an issue there, you absolutely need a qualified. Do I have to go through a doctor to see one, or can I just go ahead and just get the test? You can just get the test. It's typically much more expensive to do it individually um, because preventative care is typically covered pretty well under insurance. So that's why we recommend going through your physician is because they'll they'll be able to do it cheaper. You can do it on your own. It's just going to be uh, somewhere between three and six hundred dollars if you do it on your own. And if you have a cheaper way to do it, please tell me because we're we're looking for a better way. I think it's kind of silly that you have to pay that much for these kinds of tests because they're very run of the mill tests. We're not doing anything advanced here. Um, yeah, you can have a buddy that's a you know a cardiac surgeon write you the script for the test. It doesn't matter. It's like it, the tests are all the same. They're all done by a lab. Okay. Yeah. Um, before pictures, everybody take their clothes off, get in the mirror, take some pictures. Fantastic. Not all your clothes. Of course not. I do want to say thank you. Nobody sent me their before pictures, and I really appreciate that. That's good stuff. It's always a little alarming when I have a bunch of people sending me half-naked pictures. Um, but good stuff, as long as you got those. Again, that's another one of our data points that we're going to take a look at later on. Just put those away. If you look at your before pictures and you're like, man, it makes me really unhappy. Cool. That means that we have a lot of opportunity to make improvement. Put it away. You don't have to look at it. We do not support self-shaming in here. So just put it away. It's cool. We're going to make progress. Um, any other questions on any of that pre-stuff? We're going to talk about what's going on with the food next. Cool. All right, so a couple concerning looks. Want to give you guys space to talk about that stuff. Obviously, if there's something more personal in nature, you guys are welcome to see me one-on-one -on -one as well. Um, guys, let's talk about food. So we talked a little bit last week about eating four times a day. Who's crushing that? Fantastic. You're not sure about crushing it. It's tough, yeah. Yeah. I'm just getting used to it. Yeah. I'm trying hard for breakfast, especially. Breakfast? Yeah, breakfast is, is, I know it's the most important meal of the day. Uh, it can make a really big difference in your body composition and in your performance getting breakfast in. Um, waking up 15 minutes earlier can really help uh, get that done. Um, typically, the late lunch is the meal that people are most uh, new to. Is that kind of like 3, 4 p.m. meal? Uh, is anybody having trouble with that one? Yeah. What, what strategies, those of you that aren't having trouble, what strategies are you guys using to make uh, yourself successful there in getting that third meal in? Yeah, yeah, four. <laughs> so waiting, waiting for that four o'clock meal. Cool. Um, does, does anybody want to talk about their challenges around that? What's making it hard for them? Yeah. Yeah, remember, uh, so the United States, especially corporate America, is one of the fattest populations on the planet. So if you're getting a little bit of ridicule at work, um, that probably means you're on the right track. Like if people are making fun of your food and like, oh, are you eating meat and veggies again? Ha, ha, ha. Like take that as a compliment, like you're definitely on the right track. I know it's a bit of a change in habit. Um, some people uh, I've heard have had a lot of success. If you're in a high pressure environment where there's a lot of time pressure to get stuff done, Booking a 30-minute meeting right there can really make a lot of sense. And getting food in, having 30 minutes, are you going to need 30 minutes? Probably not. Probably 15 is more like it, but having that cushion time uh, to get your food in.